They started just like yesterday, and the day before that, and the day before that, and every day for the last month. A loop. My perfectly constructed loop. Real quick, I just wanted to talk to you guys about bulking and like what it kind of takes to do a real bulk. Like right now in fitness, there's like a lot of hate for a real bulk and you kind of just like, you're supposed to do a lean bulk. But if you guys really want to put on size, like I feel like you should be in a gaining phase for at least a few years. You know, a lot of people like cut and bulk, cut and bulk. If you guys are really trying to like grow, give it a few years of just like consistently trying to put on size. And for you guys who are like hard gainers, it's gonna be uncomfortable like trying to grow isn't meant to be super comfortable like your body wants to keep you at that size like i remember for like the first three years of lifting like every day i was forcing down those last few bites of every meal in my first year of lifting because i was able to like train hard and eat properly i went from not being able to bench the bar to benching 275 squatting 365 and then deadlifting 455 like you guys could do better than that like that's nothing crazy and most of you guys could probably do better than that if you really just like force yourself to it like i remember one of my go-to meals that i'd have every day was like half a box of pasta and then a whole jar of alfredo and then a whole packet of beef and it would take me like two hours to get that shit down you know forcing down like the last few bites of it or i'd build like the most atrocious mass gainer shakes myself and i just like toss anything I could in there. You know, I probably nuked my gut microbiome in the process, but it helped me put on a lot of size in those initial years. My whole point is that like bulking isn't really meant to be super comfortable, especially if you're like one of those people with small appetite and your body's just trying to keep you small. Max Taylor posted on his story the other day, he was just like showing his bulking and cutting phases and like he's gone through like the dirtiest bulks, but those are what led him to like his current physique. And obviously like all this kind of depends on what your individual goals are. But if you guys are like really trying to build your best physique and put on that size, like just understand like a few years of like putting on quality size is really gonna set you up for that long-term, you know, strength and size that you want. And like, to be honest, I need to get back on that sort of bulk grind because I've, I've been kind of stagnant. And I think if I like really started smashing down the calories, it would 
No, it would help my progress a lot. It's very much a routine thing. Like once you're used to it and you're used to forcing down those meals, you know, you can keep doing it. And I just need to get back to that routine, I think. So real quick, you guys really messed with the car lore and some somehow there's like a new thing every video. Right now, it always thinks one of my doors is open. And I'm not 100% sure how that happened. I think it the other day, my doors were frozen shut and I was like, I was ripping on one of the doors to try to get it open. So I gave my stuff out of the car and I think maybe that's what led to that. So now while I'm driving, it'll flash that it's open, then it'll think it's closed and it'll go back and forth really quick. And this light turns on when it thinks the door is open. So I, I get like this rave on wheels experience with just the lights going fucking crazy. I don't know, I don't have anywhere to drive right now. I just want to show you guys that. Um, I think I'll just catch you guys when we're going to the gym. Yeah, I'll see you guys then. Yo. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but today I was thinking about like how much my taste in music has changed since I started going to the gym. Before I started lifting, I would just listen to like what's in, whatever the trending sort of music was, but like as I got into lifting, my music taste has like branched off into like a million different things. Like before I started training, like if I heard a hard style song, I'd probably be like, skip, what the fuck is this? But like. As you get into training, all this kind of music becomes appealing to you. I honestly feel like it's because that's kind of how training feels, is how that sort of music sounds, like a really euphoric hard style or some sort of metal song that just like gets you hyped. When your endorphins are flowing and it's like all euphoric and you're pumped, it feels like how a hard style song sounds. Or just like any of those random genres of music you start lifting to. I feel like it's really hard to explain to someone who doesn't lift how lifting feels. Like I saw this guy's video the other day and he was talking about how like it's just like euphoric and I, I feel like you know people talk about like a runner's high which I don't, I'm not really into running, but I guess it's like, it's probably something like that where your endorphins are flowing and you have all this dopamine, but it's also different because like, you're also pumped and you like look at yourself and you feel awesome. Even if you don't have the greatest physique and you're kind of like just starting out in the gym, the pump still feels amazing and you still feel great about yourself. Like you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I look fucking awesome. Even if you're just starting out. No, I think that's why training becomes so enjoyable and addictive is just like, when you're like really training hard and your endorphins are flowing, you have all this dopamine and it's just like the most euphoric feeling. I, I don't know, it's, just, it's fucking awesome. You kind of disassociate from reality when you're in that sort of state in your, in your session. You have like the perfect music playing. I don't know, it's just like, it all comes together. It sounds corny, but you guys get it if you train like that. Anyways, we're just gonna go hit some squats. <laughs> Probably not gonna get that super pumped, awesome feeling, maybe a little bit because it's leg day, but I don't know. I'll catch you guys there. Thursday, October 31st. The city streets are crowded for the holiday, even with the rain. Hidden in the chaos is the element, waiting to strike like snakes, but I'm there too. Yo. So I've been running high bar squats for the longest time. I haven't done low bar squats in a minute, except for the last two sessions. So we're gonna do low bar today. Maybe I'll switch back to high bar depending on how it feels, but yeah, I think we're gonna stick to low bar for this session. So when you guys first start lifting, you guys probably all think you need a squat shoe like this that has a heel. But in reality, most of you guys don't need a shoe like this and you'll probably be stronger with a shoe that's flat and has a solid base. These are more useful when you're doing like an Olympic style high bar squat, but if you're just trying to squat as much as possible and doing like a powerlifting style low bar squat, you're better off with a flat shoe with a solid base. That isn't universal for everyone, but the majority of people, when you look at like most top powerlifters, they're just squatting in like a Jordan or something that's just flat and solid and you know some of them do use heels but it's very like specific cases it is kind of tough because you like kind of have to experiment or maybe have a coach to try to find out what's best for you but just like experimenting helps 
Like those are more if you have like shit ankle mobility and like a real hard time hitting depth, those might help with that. Like I also have these which are also squat shoes, but they don't have a heel, they're flat. They're more just made to be like a solid shoe to squat in. But I'm not gonna squat in these either, I'm just gonna squat in my normal shoes because they're flat and have a solid base. I would invest in these sleeves, I do think they make like enough of a difference, but don't overthink the shoes. Anyways, we're gonna get in the squats, we're gonna cook up. I have really no idea what we're gonna do because I'm just getting back in the low bar, but yeah. Let's get into it. So, picked her up to a little single with 405, as you guys saw. Um, I think I'm gonna hit it for a triple. Low bar kind of feels comfortable today. The reason I don't usually do it is because it's always like, just uncomfortable as shit, like just with my build and long femurs. But it is a stronger squat, so we gotta, we gotta get better at it. But yeah, I'm gonna try that and then we'll see how it goes. I'm really happy with that set, you know, it definitely wasn't the easiest set, but I'm hyped about it. Maybe not hyped, but like, I'm happy with it. In my opinion, it's a, we're at a pretty good spot for, you know, starting to get back in the low bar squats. Low bar squat training arc, part one. Anyways, I'm gonna drop the weight down to like 315. We're gonna do some sets of five and try to keep it conservative. I found that like, if I'm really pushing, you know, a lot of volume with high intensity, it just fatigues me so fast with squats, just cause my build is kind of awkward for squats. So yeah, we're gonna, Keep it conservative. So you know how there's all those memes about stinky knee sleeves and how they smell like shit? But it usually isn't really that bad because between like your session and your next like session, they like air out like while they're in your car or some shit. But you see my problem is, and I've showed you guys this in the past, how my car gets foggy on the inside and like frost develops on the inside. And that's because it has like this moisture problem. Like it's always like moist on the inside of my car. And the problem with my knee sleeves is when I leave them in my car, they don't really air out because of that moisture problem. So when I go to lift, they're still moist from the previous session. And it leads to my knee sleeves having like some next level moisty, mustiness to them. And you guys might be thinking, Nick, just take those bitches inside and wash them, you musty bastard. But the problem with that is they still have that like pre-2020 nostalgia, happiness, aroma, stench, baked into them and if we don't have that anymore keeping us grounded it's like what are we doing this all for i think it's time for some new knee sleeves probably <laughs>
anyways, that's a wrap for squats. Honestly, I'm really happy with where we're at. Like, we're just starting low bar. If you guys really just want to grow your quads, I would just focus on like a super deep high bar squat or a super deep pack squat. But if you're trying to squat as much as possible, you know, you really want to try to get good at low bar. My leg workouts are always super simple. So today's like more quad focused and I'm just going to do single leg leg press, quad extensions, and then some, what are those called? Like where you bend over and it's for your hamstrings. It's like this, but more at an angle, I forget. Yeah, I'm gonna run those up and then I will catch you guys after the workout. Oh, also, if you guys fuck with the fit I'm wearing, these joggers and the hoodie I was wearing earlier, both drop on the 31st. And then this long sleeve, it's got like the rough finish and the drop shoulders dropped already. It's called the Anarchy long sleeve, I think. That's a wrap. You know, I'm actually, I'm actually really hyped with how the session went. Like, for the past like few weeks, maybe like a month, I just haven't been really able to push myself in the gym. I don't know why, but like, I go through these phases where I'm kind of just like going through the motions instead of like really like executing and training hard. I don't know why, but like after I get sick, when I come back, I just have like this reignited passion for lifting, and I just, I don't know. It's like, man, I was really missing out on this thing. It's like amazing. I was, I wasn't taking advantage of it like I should. Like, my last two training sessions were honestly super weak and I was struggling with weights I really shouldn't have, but like, I was coming back from being sick. They were honestly way more enjoyable than like, the sessions like the weeks before, even though like, they were weak, like, I was training hard and everything just felt super good. Like, I was getting a really good pump. Like, kind of those workouts where you kind of just like, disassociate and you know just kind of get lost in your training session and you'll be like kind of dead in the session but in a good way i don't know i'm just happy with how the last few sessions went the squat session you know obviously i'm not the strongest in squat but like i feel like we're at a good starting point for low bar my all-time max is like 405 or three i don't think i've ever done that 
Uh, I think that's the most reps I've done with that. But yeah, hopefully we can build from here, build to that 500 pound squat finally, you know, get out of poverty squat land. But yeah, everything feels good and I'll catch you guys at home. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. No, for real though, if you guys met at the end, you're a real one. If you're new here and you fuck with the vid, make sure you guys subscribe, drop a like, all that good shit. How do you guys be asking me to make like a camera setup video? I go over it in the Winter Arc 2 video and I'll probably make an updated one down the line, but I have like a list of shit I wanna buy to like make the perfect vids. I just picked up a new lens, but yeah, I'll go over that stuff down the line. But yeah, this type of shit wouldn't be possible without you guys running up code Nick. So I appreciate you guys. Um, the next drop is on the 31st. This hoodies, sweats, a couple other things. But yeah, 31st, code Nick. But yeah, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you next time. Peace.